The National Aeronautics and Space Administration says it will not speculate on the cause of today's explosion of the Space Shuttle Challenger. It will wait for a full investigation to be completed. Shuttle Administrator Jess Moore said at a news conference a little more than an hour ago, there is no evidence of survivors among the seven crew members. President Reagan said in a brief televised address, the nation never had a tragedy like this. He called the Challenger crew heroes who had a special grace. Joining us now in Washington, John Pike, the Associate Director for Space Policy at the Federation of American Scientists. I'm sorry, if you could wait just a minute. Mr. Pike, we are uh, picking up George Bush, Vice President at the uh, Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Bush was dispatched to Florida to express the president's condolences to family members and friends of the astronauts who uh, were aboard the space shuttle Challenger this morning. Vice President enters the room. He will no doubt have a statement, and then we'll respond to questions. Let's listen in. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce the Vice President, Mr. Bush. Well, I've come here today at the President's request, accompanied by Senator Garn and Senator Glenn, to pay our respects to the families of the crew. The President and I and the entire nation join in mourning the seven splendid men and women who now rest in God's arms. Today's tragedy reminds us that danger awaits all who push back the frontier of space. It reminds us that the great adventure of space travel requires men and women of spirit and bravery. I'd like to say something in particular, something special to the school children of our nation, and especially those from Concord. You must try to understand that spirit, bravery, and commitment are what make not only the space program, but all of life worthwhile. We must never, as people in our daily lives or as a nation, stop exploring, stop hoping, stop discovering. We must press on. What can all of us give now to honor those we've lost? Let me suggest a memorial to them. We must be as they were, great in spirit, great in courage, and great in dedication to the adventure of which they were so much a part. We must resolve that, like America's pioneers of the past, others will follow, others will explore, others will risk, as these seven brave Americans risk today. And so I came here today to pay our sincere condolences to the families and the friends of the seven, and also to the proud men and women of NASA. We salute them in this hour of trial. Thank you very much, and I'm now going to go and pay my respects to the families. I'm sure that Senator Glenn and Senator Garn might like to add something, but. I might excuse myself and meet you over here if I could. I would only add very briefly that I'm pleased to be here with the Vice President. Our only purpose in coming was to pay <clears throat> tribute to the crew. It's been a very difficult day for me personally because I knew each of them. I trained with some of them. And I just extend my love and condolences to their families. Let me add just a word. <clears throat> I'm very appreciative that the Vice President would ask us to accompany him today here, even though it is a very sad occasion. It's been nearly a quarter of a century that we thought this might happen sometime, but we've delayed that day until today. We hoped that this day would never come, but unfortunately it has, and with a tragedy that uh, all Americans share together. I share a sense of personal loss, having been involved in the program, as Jake just mentioned, he does too. 
I remember yesterday was an anniversary also when Gus Grissom and Roger Chafee and and Ed White and tra very so very tragically lost their lives in the fire on the pad here. But since that time, you know, we've had we've had 56 manned missions so far. 24 with the shuttle. And I guess what it points out more than anything else is that while we have many triumphs, and that's the nature of all human progress, is we try. We keep trying the new, trying to better ourselves and trying to learn more. While we have triumphs, many of them, once in a while, there is a tragedy. And it's that triumph and tragedy comparison that we, we have here today. As one of the people who's been here all day with some of the, the families that told us coming in a few moments ago when he was talking to the families earlier, several of them said to him, don't let this slow the program down. They gave lives of their families or their loved ones or their friends in this effort. So I guess we could say that these seven that went up this morning carried the hopes and the dreams of all of us. And what we can do now is make sure that we carry their memories in carrying on. Thank you. We've got to run and no time for any questions. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Space Center, uh, we heard from the Vice President of the United States who spoke of the brave men and women, not only of this uh, space shuttle mission, which ended so tragically this morning, but of the brave men and women in the space shuttle program, uh, those who will follow the pioneers, uh, like the pioneers of the past, who will take us on uh, to uh, greater heights in space. We also heard from Senator Jake Garn, who's one of uh, three members of the Congress who have been in space. He expressed his condolences to the family and friends of the uh, seven who rode the space shuttle this morning. And Senator John Glenn, who was our first man in orbit, spoke about the triumph and tragedy and urged this program uh, go ahead. We were, uh, we interrupted uh, what we were about to begin, uh, an interview with John Pike, who is the associate director for When we, were, when we got off the air, before she left, she grabbed me by the arm and said, say positive things throughout the day. There's, there seems to be a lot of emotion from everyone associated with the space program, or those particularly interested in it, that we not accept this as a major defeat today. What do you have to say about that? Well, I think that uh, Senator Glenn uh, put it very well, that uh, the sense of tragedy and the sense of loss that uh, we feel today um, I think reflects the aspirations and the hopes uh, that the space program has uh, meant for the United States. And I think that um, it's clear that we do need to go ahead in this and that this tragedy uh, will be a temporary setback for the program, but it, I think that it's clear that NASA will discover what the problem was, uh, will develop a solution to it, and that the shuttle will uh, be flying again, flying successfully and flying safely. We certainly don't know what caused this morning's tragedy, but there have been certain public perceptions lately, uh, especially in light that this morning's flight was the second of a record scheduled 15 space shuttle flights for 1986, that perhaps we were moving too fast, trying to get too much done too soon. How would you respond to those who say that? Well, the uh, shuttle by the end of the decade is going to be flying 24 flights a year. Uh, I think that uh, the Space Administration has been cautious and prudent in increasing the number of flights each year. Uh, I think that the number of delays that we saw in uh, the last couple of flights indicated uh, NASA's concern for the uh, safety of the uh, shuttle, its crew and payload. And I think that uh, the Space Administration has done an excellent job of balancing both the requirement of getting these payloads in space and also doing it in a prudent and safe fashion. Well, I mentioned 15 flights scheduled for 1986. There was a lot scheduled to be done. We now know that the program, no doubt, will be on hold indefinitely, unless, at least until the outcome of the current investigation. How, what, what impact is that going to have on our, our space program? 
Well, clearly, once uh, we have uh, discovered what the problem was and developed a fix for it, there's going to be a great effort to uh, recover the schedule, to get uh, back up to where we would have been. Uh, I think you're going to see a lot of people down at the Cape working uh, very long hours, uh, working very hard to recover this. Um, I don't think that we're ever going to emotionally recover from this tragedy, uh, but I believe that uh, with the sort of dedication that the Space Agency has shown in the past, that we will be able to get the program back on schedule and restore confidence in the shuttle. John Pike, thanks for joining us. I'm sorry we didn't get to spend more time with you. Associate Director for Space Policy, Federation of American Scientists, joining us in Washington. Newswatch will continue in just a moment. America's 56th manned space launch ends in a fiery disaster as the Space Shuttle Challenger explodes a little over a minute after its liftoff this morning. This special expanded edition of Newswatch continues. I'm Lou Waters. And I'm Mary Alice Williams. It wasn't supposed to happen. America's space missions had become almost routine until today. Ten miles high and eight miles from its Florida launch pad, and it seemed as if another tardy shuttle mission would finally get into orbit. For the first time carrying a school teacher, Krista McAuliffe, along with Commander Dick Scobie and crew members Judith Resnick, Ellison Ozanuka, Arnold McNair, Gregory Jarvis, and Mike Smith. And then instructions for mission control. Challenger, go at throttle up. Challenger, go at throttle up. And tragedy. One minute, 15 seconds. Velocity, 2,900 feet per second. Altitude, 9 nautical miles. Downrange distance, 7 nautical miles. The seemingly routine radio transmissions giving the shuttle's position and speed belied what had just occurred. But the huge fireball was visible from the ground, its evidence providing an eerie scrawl of skywriting over the Atlantic, in full view of the crew's families and friends. Obviously a major malfunction. We have a report from the flight dynamics officer that the vehicle has exploded. Flight director confirms that. We are looking at uh, checking with the recovery forces to see uh, what can be done at this point. One of the two solid fuel booster rockets descended into the sea on its parachute. Fragments of the spacecraft continued to drop into the ocean for 45 minutes. Early Tuesday morning, the crew repeated the routine it had gone through Monday before the mission was scrubbed because of weather and technical problems. Well, weather came into play during this attempt as well. A two-hour hold in the countdown was used to investigate icicles that had formed on the launch pad in the sub-freezing temperatures. But after the initial concern, the Three, countdown resumed. Two, one. And liftoff, liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. And the Challenger was finally on its way. Barely a minute later, the trip ended. Tragedy struck once before in the U.S. space program. In 1967, three astronauts were killed when fire swept through their Apollo spacecraft as it was being tested on the launch pad at Cape Canaveral. The deaths of Gus Grissom, Edward White, and Roger Chafee are the only fatalities on board a spacecraft in the U.S. space program. That fire apparently started when an electrical spark ignited the oxygen-rich atmosphere in the spacecraft. The tragedy delayed the Apollo program for nearly two years while safety features were added. The Soviets were first in space with Sputnik in 1957 and first with a man in space with Yuri Gagarin's 1961 Earth orbit. They, too, have paid a cost in human life. A cosmonaut was killed during a 1967 space flight when the craft's parachute failed to open on returning to Earth. In 1971, three Soviet cosmonauts were found dead in their return spacecraft after 24 days in orbit. Despite spectacular achievements like landing men on the moon, America's space effort has been plagued with technical problems from its earliest days. The space shuttle program has had its share of technical troubles. The shuttle Challenger has had earlier flights aborted because of fuel contamination, and one of its missions was cut short when an engine shut down in flight. The frequent launch postponements underline NASA's concern for safety factors. But today's tragedy emphasizes that human ingenuity cannot eliminate the element of danger from the exploration of space. Bill McGowan, CNN.